All right, got another pretty interesting uh, video for you guys here. Uh, today, I'm gonna be taking a look at the Starlink Mini. Uh, so as you guys know, I uh, about a month ago, unboxed and took a look at the Starlink full-size standard dish, uh, the Gen 3. Um, but I always really wanted to take a look and try out the Mini version because the Mini actually, for how I use Starlink, uh, would be a lot more ideal. So if this can provide me with adequate, primarily <coughs> upload speeds, uh, then I will probably uh, use this one over the Gen 3, uh, just for my personal use case. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy that I was able to get my hands on it. This thing is actually fairly difficult to get at the moment. Um, stock uh, within stores is pretty limited. Uh, so when it comes into stock, you kind of have to jump on it and uh, get it and order it straight away. Um, so yeah, again, I ordered this uh, from Home Depot, just like I did with the Gen 3 standard. <clears throat> um, and it came out to about $650 after taxes and everything. So pretty expensive uh, and about $100 more uh, than the Gen 3 uh, when it is not on sale. Uh, the Gen 3 currently is on sale for $300, which is pretty good. But anyway, so let's go ahead and get into this and take a look. So the box is obviously really tiny compared to the Gen 3. And I also have taken off the cardboard edges to make it a lot easier to open for this video. So let's go ahead and just do that. So I'll tilt up a little bit here. You can see there's some very brief, very simple instructions on how to set up the unit. But main star of the show is down here in the bottom. So first off, we have the power adapter, much smaller than the Gen 3, obviously, because this particular version of the Starlink uses way, way less power. Uh, this is rated at 60 watts maximum. Uh, at 30 volts, 2 amps. So that is a telltale sign that the Mini draws way less power, which is really, really ideal if you're going to be traveling with it. Um, and what's also cool is that the Mini also comes with a pole adapter or pole mount adapter in the box, uh, whereas the Gen 3 uh, does not. So that's actually really cool. And what's also very, very cool is that certain places online, you can order a tripod mount adapter that slots into this pole mount uh, and then using this thing that comes in the box uh, you can actually mount the mini onto a standard tripod uh, that would be typically used for a camera so that is a really really nifty thing uh, so then under this piece of cardboard is the actual dish itself so as you can see straight away Oh, and there's a little bit of a piece of cardboard on top of that to protect it. But anyway, straight away, you can immediately see how much smaller this thing is. I mean, this is the palm of my hand, right in the middle of it. It is super tiny. So if I get a standard size piece of paper here and put it over top of the mini, you can see it is not that much bigger than a standard sized uh, piece of printer paper. So. That is shocking uh, considering the size of the standard dish. The Gen 3 is enormous compared to this. Uh, so that is really, really good. Um, the back of it, um, just like the Gen 3, it has a textured back, uh, so you can kind of carry it around and it's not slippery in your hand when you're holding it. Uh, but it also does have that little bit of a kickstand so you can prop it up on the ground uh, if you want. And then in here, you have your port, so you have your barrel jack DC power port and then a RJ45 uh, gigabit ethernet adapter or ethernet port rather. So really cool there. And that is the next thing with this is that this is able to be powered uh, via uh, DC power. So you can connect this to, uh, for example, an external battery pack or get a USB-C to barrel jack cable and plug it into anything USB-C powered uh, that provides say 100 watts of power uh, to power this unit, which is great. Um, it, that, that opens up an enormous amount of possibilities, again, for those of us that travel and want to use this on the go, just like how I'm gonna be using it. I'm gonna be using it on the go for work uh, while I'm camping and things like that. So super nice. And I'll make a dedicated video uh, going over the power options uh, that I'm going to be kind of testing out uh, with this dish. Okay, but then we have the regulatory notices. Nothing to see there. And then lastly, we have our very long 
uh, power cable. So that is basically it in the box. Um, but now uh, let's go ahead and move over to the setup and take a look at the setup process for the Mini. All right, so I currently have Starlink plugged in uh, to power right now. So I'm gonna go through the camera app here to kind of see how I have the unit plugged in. Um, I'm using a DC to USB-C cable. I, and I have it going into a USB-C power jack here to an extension cord just for now. Uh, so that's kind of how I have it set up for the moment. Uh, but to, it's currently on. The blue light is blinking. So if we go into settings to the Wi-Fi network, we should see Starlink as a network show up in just a little bit. Okay, and there we go. So we can see straight away now the Starlink has connected or broadcasted rather its Wi-Fi network. I click on that, there we go. And we go out, then we go back into our Starlink app. There we go, so it's now connecting and it says Wi-Fi is not configured. So we want to now uh, go ahead and configure the Wi-Fi. Um, while it's doing that, it's also calculating its orientation and talking to satellites and everything like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and configure the Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm gonna call it that right there. AJSK Network Submit. And so then from this point, it's going to apply the settings. All right, there we go. So the Wi-Fi has now been configured and I can tap below uh, where it says connect and it will connect to this Wi-Fi network. It wants to join, hit join. Now it's gonna to attempt to uh, connect to that new network that is being broadcasted. And there we go. So we are online and ready to go. So the next thing we need to do is two things. Is it has a software update. So it has a software update uh, that is currently downloading itself at the moment. So that must mean it has some sort of a connection even though it says to activate. So I do need to activate it right now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now here we are <coughs> on the activation page uh, to choose what service we would like. Uh, so I skipped through some of the other settings because it had some personal information uh, such as typing in my email and password and things. Uh, but now this is where you get to choose what type of service you would like for your dish. Uh, you can choose unlimited or a 50 gig plan. Uh, for this particular one, I'm going to go with the 50 gig plan for $50 a month because the ideal way to use this is if you are not going to use, let's say, more than 165 gigabytes because they charge you basically a dollar per gigabyte. Uh, so if you do not intend to go over 165 gigs in a month, uh, you can have a little toggle within the 50 gig plan uh, to enable additional data beyond that initial 50 gig cap. Uh, so that's kind of how I'm going to use this. So I'm going to do the 50 gig plan, add to cart. All right, so there we go. So it's now active. <clears throat> um, again, I kind of had to jump through or skip through because uh, it had a bunch of personal information was showing up, uh, but I had to add the service to the cart on Starlink's website uh, and put in my payment information. And we are now, or should now, hopefully be activated. So if I go back in here, there we go. So uh, it actually looks like the update is ready to be updated or installed rather. And so let's go ahead and do a preliminary speed test before I install the update to kind of see what we're looking at right here. So it looks like currently, well, it's not too bad. How about 140, 130-ish down? Upload. 16 15 about 16 up with 31 millisecond latency that is not actually half bad considering um that i had just turned this device on uh, not too long ago so uh, that's pretty good let's do an advanced speed test and see what we're getting with that so starlink to the internet uh, from basically the dish to the satellites uh, it looks like it's getting about 80 on average. About 75, about 80 looking like there. 
and upload is looking like it is in the range of 20 to 21. Again, that's, I don't know, actually it's going up quite a bit now. So we're at 35, 37. Wow, not too bad. And then from the dish, or the built-in router uh, that is currently Wi-Fi 5 uh, to my device is looking like it's sitting around 230 or so. Like if it's down and then upload is sitting... Ooh, that's pretty variable. Looks like it's jumping anywhere from 350 to 407 maybe. It's hard to read with how fast that's jumping around. Uh, but there, it stopped about 353, so that's fairly respectable considering the size of this dish. Um, so let's do just one more regular speed test. Yeah, they're still getting about 130 down, so that's hasn't really changed. But the, the latency has changed, so now it's 21 milliseconds. And yeah, the, the sustained upload seems like it's in the ballpark of 14 or so. So that's not too bad, again, considering this, the size of this dish. Uh, and now let's check alignment. So alignment does appear to be slightly off. So let me go back over here and rotate the dish and see how we can get that to be... There we go, so now I've rotated it. And you can see it's basically in line now. And let's check obstructions. Okay, we don't have really any obstruction map yet. I'll take some time to do that. But now that it's fully in alignment, let's, uh, let's do one more speed test. Kind of see what it's doing now. Oh wow, so now that it's in perfect alignment, we're now getting about 160 down. That's pretty good. And wow, upload is, wow, that's actually pretty good. Now it's averaging about 24 megabits upload compared to 15 before. That is substantially better. So now let's go ahead and do a quick test of speed in the third party speed test app. Twenty-three millisecond latency, not too bad. Yeah, about one forty, maybe one fifty even through the third-party speed test app. Now let's check upload. Eh, third party is showing around that fourteen fifteen mark. So maybe the Starlink speed test uh, in the app is a little bit biased, which is possible. But uh, let's do. One more for good measure. And actually, it looks like a little bit of a change has happened. So, a different satellite must be flying over because now we've dropped down to about 50 to 60 megabits down. Quite a bit less than what we were getting before. However, the upload is slightly higher. Yeah, with 29 millisecond latency. Okay, so not too bad. So anyway, uh, so that's basically it uh, for the initial setup of the Starlink. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and now install this update. Uh, it's going to go ahead and shut off the unit and go put it into a reboot. And that should be it. So anyway, yeah, that is the initial uh, unboxing and setup process of Starlink Mini. Um, stay tuned for some more... Uh, additional videos and content on the Mini. Um, I'm going to be doing some additional speed tests in different locations uh, that I plan to be traveling to, as well as doing some different uh, power options. So different options that you can plug the Starlink Mini into such for the DC power and other things like that. So keep an eye out. Uh, there will be some more content soon. And yeah, with that all being said, make sure to hit that like button. It's greatly appreciated. Hit that subscribe button as well. That is also much, much appreciated and greatly helps out the channel. And yeah, if you guys have any questions about uh, what you've seen in this video, drop those down below. And I will try to my best to help you guys out. And again, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.